So in this lesson, we'll graph exponential functions. And let's um, remember how to what's happening when we evaluate this um, with negative exponents. So the negative does makes the reciprocal, and then we square it. We get one fourth. Here we would have one half. Two to the zero is one. And now we'll just look at some functions using these properties. So if you have a decimal or a negative exponent, let's rewrite the, this without the negative and without the decimal. I think it's easier to see what's happening. So we'll write that as a one-tenth the negative x. And then the negative means 10. So it's really just 10 to the x. And let's use this format. And so the y-intercept is when the x equals 0. The x-intercept is when the y equals 0. And now we have to think of a number that we can put here that will make this equal to 0. So let's go to the table and start guessing a few numbers. Um, maybe we'll do negative 1, but then we get 1 tenth. Maybe it's 0. No, because 0 makes it a 1. And it can't be a positive number, so it's not a negative. If we did one uh, negative 2, then we would get 1 over 100. So no negative number is going to make this equal to 0. 0 doesn't make it equal to 0, because 0 makes it equal to 1. And a positive number is not going to make it equal to 0. So it turns out this has no solution. There's no x-intercept. Uh, we'll look at the asymptote after we do the graph. And let's just see a couple more points. All right. At 1, we'll go to 10. At 0, we're at 1. And then we go to 1 tenth. And 1 one hundredth. So it just gets closer to the x-axis, and we can see that the asymptote is y equals 0. The domain is, it goes all the way to the left, so this is going to the left. It, we can put any number in over here. There's, it's never undefined. We can put 1,000 in here. It'll just be a really big number. So we can go all the way to the right on the graph. The range, uh, this y value does not have a point on the graph. This y value does not have a point on the graph. Z y equals 0 does not have a point on the graph. But right after y equals 0, there is a point on the graph. Not including 0, it goes to infinity. All right, you try this one, pause the video.
put a 0 in for x, and we're going to get 3 to the 0, and that equals 1, so 0, 1 is the y-intercept. Oh, before we do that, let's uh, change this. So, um, this negative means we're going to have the reciprocal of this. And then, uh, so be careful over here, uh, 1 over 3 to 0 is still 1, so that's okay. This is the same as 1 third to the x. You can write it either way. Um, so let's look at that, 1 third to the x. What number can go here to make this equal to 0? Well, if we try a negative, we'll have 1 third to the negative 1, and that's 3. And so all the, the negative choices will just give you the reciprocal. Uh, if we try 1, we have 1 third to the 1, that equals 1 third. We already know what 0 does, so again, this is no solution. And we have 0, 1 is the y-intercept, negative 1, 3, 1, 1 third, the asymptote is y equals 0, and the same domain and range as before. All right, now we have transformations, or more transformations. So let's look at this. Um, this is going to be a vertical reflection. And we will multiply y values by negative 1. Horizontal reflection and we multiply x values by negative 1. Uh, just to keep everything the same, why don't we say divide? Because if there is a number up there, that's we're going to divide by that number. We always divide by this and we multiply by that. Horizontal translation, and we will add b to x values vertical translation and we're going to add c to y values All right, so we see we can make we can describe it. Oh, and then graph. So um, f here's the parent function. 
and we can see this minus 2 uh, g of x is f of x translated 2 to the right and 5 up and then to graph let's make sure we have the points of the parent function of f of x and we'll go 2 to the negative 2 that's 1 over 4 2 to the negative 1 2 to the 0 Okay, and here we have the points of the parent function. Then we'll do the transformations. Add two to the x values. Add 5 to the y values. And we'll graph the parent function, negative 2, 1 fourth, negative 1, 1 half, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4. Parent function, and then we can plot these points, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a fourth. Over 1, we go to 5.5. Over 2, we go to 6. Over 3, we go to 7. And over 4, we go to 9. We also see that there's an asymptote here on the parent function, and it got moved translated up five so we can always know we go one two three four five and that'll be the um, horizontal asymptote Okay, pause and try that one. We can describe the transformation and let's find the coordinates. Uh, minus one from the x value and we'll get negative 3 
and then minus 2 from the y value we're going to have negative 1 and 8 ninths negative 1 and 2 thirds minus 2 minus 2 So the parent function is negative two one ninth. We'll go to negative one one third and zero one one three. The transformation negative three. Negative 3 almost to negative 2. Negative 3 almost to negative 2. And then we'll go negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, and 1, 7. And the asymptote used to be here. It got shifted down too. So that we always want to make sure we do. That's the easy thing. We can see how far the uh, asymptote moved. And that helps you graph also if you know the asymptotes at negative 2. Alright, we'll do this one together when you have a horizontal reflection and a horizontal shift. It can be a little confusing. So let's um, rewrite it like this. Factor out a negative. And then we can describe the transformation. Uh, g of x is is a horizontal reflection of f of x and translation 3 right. And then when we do the, uh, we need the coordinates of the parent function. This would be 4 to the negative 2, that's 1 over 16. Let's write 4 of x. Four to the x. Now, when we do these um, transformations, we'll do the multiplication first. Multiply the x by a negative. And Then we're going to add 3 to the x. Add 3. Uh, 
and the parent function is at uh, 0, 1, 1, 4, 0, 1, 1, 4, and then this will be uh, negative 1 and 1 fourth. All right, and then the transformation 5, 1 16th, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 4, up a fourth, over 3, up 1, over 2, up 4, and we see the transformation, it's a reflection and a shift. All right, remember that E is approximately 2.7, so if we're going to graph it, that could help us graph. And let's take a look at same question, describe the transformation, and we can say g of x is f of x translated two left and one down. And let's look at the table e to the 1 is approximately 2.7, so that'll help us graph. e to the 0 is 1. e to the negative 1 is approximately 1 over 2.7, so if you're graphing it, you might just estimate it to be 1 third. All right. So let's um, look at e to the x and then we'll go so we're going to go uh, subtract 2 from the x's We're going to subtract 1 from the y. Now that's about 1 third. Um, let's subtract 1 from it and we'll be at approximately negative 2 thirds. I won't write it because someone might be picky about that, but we can just estimate it on the graph. All right, so we'll go negative one, approximately one third, zero one, and one up to 2.7. Supposed to be a dotted line, that's the parent function. And then it got shifted, so we'll go negative three, and that'll be um, approximately negative two thirds. Let's graph the other ones and we can see what's happening. Negative 2, 0, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1 1.7. And then this is going to be negative 3 right about there. Um, we can also, if we're unsure what the graph is going to do, we can see that it got moved down 1. So the previous asymptote, the asymptote of the parent function, is now going to be at negative 1 and that helps you graph helps you see where the graph is going to go
Okay, pause and try that one. Remember to factor out a negative here. That's no, not nice. E to the X. And now we're going to, we have e to the negative x minus 1. So we have to multiply the x's by a negative, or divide the x's by a negative, and then we'll add 1 to the x's. So let's do e to the negative x. e to the negative x e to the negative, x minus 1, and now that means add 1. So the parent function is 0, 1, 1, 2.7, and then approximately one third there. Now we're going to have two approximately one third over two up approximately one third over one up one over zero up mm, two point seven. All right, and that's it for today.